How's it going YouTube? Today we're back on the camper. I'm going to fit another solar panel because a few weeks ago, a month ago I think it was, we fitted another solar controller so we could split between the leisure battery and the vehicle battery. I had a ring split charger solar controller that I'm not using for solar anymore. Seemed a bit of a waste. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'll get another panel and we'll fit the panel onto that controller and use both controllers which is perfectly fine. You can use two controllers onto onto one battery because they're intelligent controllers so it'll change between the bolt charge and the float charge at the same time they're quite clever so they'll be okay so i'm going to finish this coffee and then we'll go and have a look shall we you can never have too much power So we'll have a quick look what we've got in here and what we're going to do. I'll not go into too much detail because I went through the whole system in the last video. I'll try and put a link up to that one. Right, so what I've got up here is a 150 watt solar panel there. And there's the entry point for the cables. I've got to fit another one of those. I'm going to fit it here to make it symmetrical. The reason I'm not putting two sets of cables through through this holes is is because you'll get water ingress you need one perfectly round cable going through it and then it can tighten up onto onto the seal what i did with this panel is i, I stuck it down with sycoflex which i didn't really think i had because i always change my mind and change things so i've got to cut that off what i've got is i've got another one of these panels it's slightly smaller because they didn't have this one in stock i've got the 125 watt model but the width there to there is the same so i'm going to take this off turn it 90 degrees bolt the two panels together and instead of sticking them down what i'm going to do is make some angle brackets so i can bolt it to these rails it would be easier just wiring the two panels together and using these existing cables but i want to use both controllers still because i want one of the panels split between the leisure battery and the vehicle battery for no other reason than the fact that i can right if you guys remember this panel from the last video this will tell us our overall charge or discharge since the last reset which was about a month ago when i did that last video if i have a look we're 130 amp hour into charge so that means we've been putting more power in than we've been taking out which is pretty obvious because the fridge is turned off the television is not on standby anymore i've got the planar heater running now just to warm it up a bit but I've not been using the vehicle so it's obviously going to be in positive what I'll do is after I've done this I'll turn the fridge on I'll plug the television back in and I'll leave it as it would be as if I was using it regular right, in here there's a panel hundred and twenty five watt panel at full charge according to this sheet we should be getting about seven amps but you'll you'll never get that especially in england i should expect about five amps out of this in the middle of summer right next job we need to get the other panel off the van oh, i've got a couple of different types of knives to try so i'm going to cut this bead off and get this panel off i want to burn all the bridges between us I managed to prise the screws out from the bracket on this side so I'll sort that out in a minute but we're off I've just got to unplug those plugs there and then I can take the panel off now there it is turned 90 degrees that's how they're gonna sit I'm gonna move this bar back so I can fit two of them in and then I'm not gonna stick it to the roof again because that was a bad idea even though they never if it's gonna stay like that they'll stay there forever which is really good actually but I'm gonna bracket it onto these cross beams here so I'm gonna take this inside I'm gonna clean it up clean up this roof 
and then bolt the two panels together and then I need to come back and fit another one of those glands into the roof over there. Right, that's all off and clean. I've, I've cleaned this up, I've scraped it off. That's as best as I'm but do it because I can't be asked to do it any better. You're not going to see it under the panel anyway. Uh, next job, fit another one of these. There. I'm going to fit it there to keep it all symmetrical and it also helps me with my run inside. Let's have a look at the cable run. Now, as you can see, that cable is going to come in about there. So I'm going to take it this way and take it down this side of the vehicle because it's going to be easier than getting it down there where all the cupboards are. And then down at the back, I'll take it across and down the back. So I've taken one of those strips out and then as you can see under the strips it's screwed there so if I just do undo a couple of screws then I'll drop this panel down a bit out the way so I can get to the hole and the cable. There we are that's enough I can get in there the cable's gonna come through there somewhere so next job gotta get a drill bit and we're drilling through there. Alright so what we'll do is we'll put a hole in here we'll do a 20 mil hole so I can put this grommet in afterwards and protect the cables from the bare metal. Right, so we've got a nice clean hole protected from the, the bare metal to bring the cables through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cables through first and then take them through these little grommets and we'll stick that down to make it all waterproof. So the same as that one. Right, what I'm using for this is a 12 gauge or 4 mil cable. It's much bigger than what you need really, but it's quite a long run, so... You can use the cable calculators online if you want to work out what you're exactly supposed to use, but... I'm an electrician, so we're using this from experience. Right, so there we are, the cables poking out inside. They're literally just hanging down, we'll sort those out later. What we need to do is take those cables up, bring them out through here and then we'll stick this into place and then that bit will be done. Right, that's that stuck down. I've just put some masking tape on it now just to hold it in place. A couple of hours it'll hold it alright. It's 24 hours to go off properly but a couple of hours will hold it in place. I've moved this bar to this side of them so because I'm going to make some angle brackets off of this to hold the solar panel and that one at that end, I've moved it as far back as it can go then this gap here now is exactly the same width as what I need it to be. So the next job is we need to bolt the solar panels together, make some little angle brackets to go onto there. Actually before I do that I'll put these connectors on the end of these cables. MC4 connectors. Solar panels come fitted with the, the opposite connectors to these so I can fit these to these cables and then we can just plug it into the solar panel later. So we crimp them on with these F type crimpers. Right, there's two types. You'll see a male and a female. Make sure you get the right ones on the right cable. The female goes on this red cable. So what you need to do, split it, put this bit over the cable, strip back a little bit of the cable, using the F-type crimpers, crimp on the end, and take the black end, push it in until it clips into place. And take the rubber, push that into place, Screw this cap back on, nice and tight. That's it, done. I'll do the black one, and then we'll go and have a look at this panel. Right, first thing I want to do on this is measure down there, and I'm going to drill three holes through to bolt these two panels together. There's the two panels bolted together, nice and sturdy. And there's some brackets that I've bolted on, just made out of aluminium, I've sprayed them black. I'll just let that dry and then we'll go and try it on. Right, there it is in place. I'm not going to bolt it down yet, I need to bolt it through those cross beams, but I'm not going to do it yet because I've left it all unplugged. You never plug in solar panels until you've finished all the wiring because unless you want to work in the dark, you can't turn those off. So they always need to be the last thing to be plugged in. So I'm going to leave that like that for now, go inside and do all the wiring inside. As you can see there, this has covered up all that wiring 
a bit better looks nice and neat right moving on to the inside I've got to cut these wires to length I've got to get them to the back of that cupboard over there where the controller is and don't forget guys if you've not subscribed to this channel already subscribe because I'm sure there's loads more things we can overcomplicate Right, cables across. We've got it across to this wardrobe. So next job, strip the back of this cupboard out, all the shelves out, so I can get to the controller and we'll get the cable down to. Right, there's the controller we're going to. This ring controller. If you want to know more about this setup, have a look at the other video I did. I'll put a link in the description for that one and then you can see why I'm doing what I'm doing. I need to get these cables down to there so we can connect into the solar connections. There we have it, the cables are down. I've got to connect the plus and the negative into the first two terminals in this controller. It's a bit of a squeeze in there so can't really video it. We'll have a look when it's connected. Right, that's connected up. As you can see, it's still in sleep mode. That's because it's got no I input voltage. That'll kick into life when I start the engine. Or it should kick into life when I plug in the solar panel. So what I'll do now is I'll get a ladder, I'll lift that panel up and plug them in. What you're actually supposed to do before you plug any solar panels in is run some continuity tests and some earth leakage tests, but we'll just pretend I've done that, shall we? <laughs> Okay, nothing blew up. The van didn't set on fire. If we look at the panel, I don't know if you can see, but that's coming to life and it's charging off of the solar now. The second panel's also working. That said, it's getting three and a half amps. Right, so if I come round to this panel, this is showing we've got a 6.9 amp charge. This is taken into account. We've got 10% of one of the panels going into the vehicle battery. It's sunny today, but it's still winter and it's a low sun. So that is really good. That seems to be working really well. I'm really pleased with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all this back together and then I'll meet you guys on the roof and we'll get it bolted down and finished up, shall we? There's a panel bolted down. What I've done is I've used some self-drilling tech screws to hold those down. What I will do over the next few days is I'll change those for stainless steel. I've also on the side here I've added a little angle bracket and I've sicky flexed it down to the roof just to support the centers. That's about the job complete. I think it looks good. Right, that's everything back together and all working. I'm really impressed. We've got nearly four amps charge now well that's even with all these lights on so don't forget to like the video if you liked it obviously subscribe if you've not subscribed already and i'll catch you guys later in the next video cheers now i wanna burn all the bridges between us